right, hey everyone, I just finished my bike ride and you know what, I checked my bank account and my husband left me $120 again. Um, you know what, it's a joke, honestly, it's a joke. $120, I will be living on. So he doesn't wanna take care of his family. He's got his family involved and they don't wanna take care of their daughter-in-law and their grandson and it's just so sad it really is so anyways when you marry into the wrong family you need to look out because whoa they will try to tear you to pieces and so um my next challenge is living off 120 dollars every single week unless he goes lower and i said you know what seriously seriously is this all you're sending oh you're being such a good husband i said so I'm also going to be suing him um, in the future. And then for now, I will be getting the back child support that he will owe me. Because he gave, it, he gave me 500 a week. And that's still not enough if you think about it. It's not. You're looking at a home. You're looking at electricity. You're looking at water. Still not enough. And he wouldn't go out and get a second job or do whatever he needs to do to take care of his family. So I still have stuff in storage that's over there, and that's going to be, um, let me see, that's probably going to be about half of the 120, and then somehow, you know, my son will be fed, and I will get the help I need for a home, um, but yeah, he's left us with rags, total rags, and this is the way he is. He is very selfish, extremely selfish. He has major issues with control, major issues with his family. So um, I will be living off $120 for now with a kid who's under 18. This is really, you know, crumbs. And that's how his family, um, how his mother is too. She will give the littlest thing and make it look like it's a big deal. She'll give you like this, um, you know, this card or she'll help her son. And then he owes her pretty much for life. Like he'll, she'll buy him a helmet and, you know, he owes her or she'll help him with a, with his truck and he owes her for life. And they held the trailer over his head. They held money over his head and all they were really doing was breadcrumbing him. There really is no real connection or relationship. So, um, you know, they've, They've definitely interfered in my marriage and they will be paying for those actions too. So that's what I'm looking at in the future. Meanwhile, $120 is what I will be living on. And luckily, I'm pretty minimalist, ladies. And in the future, make sure you take care of yourself first. And I saw this coming because back in Webster when we were living there in New Hampshire, he actually left for a couple nights. So he's been wanting to leave for a while now. So this is his way of getting a divorce. He wants a divorce and he doesn't want to take responsibility for his family. And I told him he will have to divorce me. So I'm going to stay in this marriage, even at $120. And I'm going to let his conscience bother him. Every single week he goes to the bank and he has to think of me. Every single week he has to think of his kids and how he's only giving $120 to his family. So I'm going to leave it there and just let him, let God deal with him, basically. Let God uh, prick any conscience he has left and let him, uh, you know, have to live with it, so to say. All right. So ladies, watch who you marry. Make sure you take care of yourself. And the other thing I was going to say is when we were under the COVID uh, declaration that I put in place for our home, um, to protect us because he wouldn't lift a finger. I took that money and I enjoyed putting that money in some things that I needed to do. So make sure you do put yourself first in that marriage when you have a husband who doesn't want to take care of you. Okay, have a great day, ladies.